Hello from Slide Nerd and hello from Weeps. What's up, folks? In the last bit, I was actually gonna show you something else about how strings are constructed, but our plane started flying in the wrong direction by showing you the heap and the constant pool and stuff like that. In this bit, let me go ahead and complete what I started. So here you have string S1 is hello world. This is the way of declaring a constant string in Java. A string S2 is new string S1. Now this is one of the ways which you can make a string. You can have S2 and S1 both having the same content, but remember they may be in the different locations because S1 is in the constant pool and S2 is going to be in the heap. So probably their memory locations are different. There's a third one. I have not shown you arrays yet. So you guys probably look at this and you're wondering what this means. Don't worry too much about it. There's a third constructor for making a string. An array is nothing but a common name given to multiple elements together of the same type. If you have A and B over here, there are two elements, right? And there is an array ARR which points to both of them and that's what exactly an array is. I'm going to talk about arrays in detail later as we move through after this string section. But for now all you need to understand is this. You have a string S1. You can make a string from an array by saying string S1 is new string ARR inside the brackets. Or you can also say exactly where to start and where to end. Let me show you that. So here if you have hello world over here, an array is actually a collection of same data items. All right. So if you have hello world start from 0 and you go all the way up to 10. I have not put 10 over here. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These are each location. At each location you can see there's a character over here. There's L over th at 3, there's O at 4 and there's a space at 5. There's 6 W so on right. So if I say new string char ARR int offset int count that means I'm going to tell exactly where to start. For example new string ARR 0, 4 is actually going to start at 0 and take 4 characters from 0 right including zero right so that's gonna give you hell in return for now let me go into NetBeans and actually get you guys up to some action right so here in NetBeans I have nothing but an empty project I'm gonna make my first string over here by saying string s1 is hello I'm gonna make my second one by string string s2 is new string as you guys can see I can pass s1 over here and remember the content may be same but they are gonna be unequal you can test it out by using a println statement and checking if both of them are equal or not the answer is gonna be false s1 equals equals s2 as you can see it says false because s1 the variable s2 the variable they are pointing to different memory locations the content is the same but the memory is different now if you want to check for content you can actually put this by saying s1 dot equals s2 so this way control s shift f6 now as you guys can see it is true because now this time it's actually checking if this there is hello inside s1 and inside s2 also there is hello so that means the content is the same and that's what this true tells you all right so now let me go ahead and show you the other constructor which i was talking about there's a character array by saying char arr and to put a bracket right over here to indicate that it's an array or i can put a bracket over here it doesn't matter it's your call uh, instead of making a new char i'm simply going to assign some constant values over here by saying a put single quotes for each character put a comma to separate the multiple characters b c and that should be enough all right so now i'm going to make a string s3 by saying string s3 is new string give the arr in bracket let me go ahead and print this out control s shift f6 so you guys can see it says abc okay i can see start at zero take only one character by this let me go ahead and print this now as you can see it prints only a if i say start at one take only one character it's gonna print b Start at 1, take 2 characters, it's gonna print B and C. As you guys can see, this is 1, this is 2. So, you understand how the count works, it's inclusive, right? So, this is one of the things you guys have understood. Let me go ahead and show you the other constructor that I'm missing so far. So, now we are gonna talk about uh, constructing a string from byte. Now, you probably are wondering why the hell you need a byte array for making a string. Things are like these. Whenever you're reading data from the network, using input stream or output stream or something like that, you probably read data in bytes and that's why this byte buffer constructor becomes very important if you see there are 65 and 66 over here now these 65 and 66 are nothing but actually ASCII values if you guys remember your strings your data is stored uh, into integers in the binary format if you say high your high is not going to be stored inside the memory your high is going to get converted into some number and that number is going to get converted to binary and that binary will be stored right so here 65 is nothing but capital A 66 is nothing but capital B so if you see 65 and 66 buffer the byte the array buff is the same name for both the locations it's going to point to the array over here in the memory location you see string s1 is new string buff you pass the array now let me go ahead and show you how this looks in NetBeans. okay now there is nothing different except for the fact that the values are changed if i say 65 66 just two of them so as you guys can see over here there's a byte buff 65 and 66 are the two values inside this array there's a string s4 which i'm making for this buff now let's see what act actually happens when you print this s4 out 
it's A B. Can you guys see that? The 65 is converted to capital A, which is your ASCII value. 66 is again converted to capital B. So if you put more values over here, maybe something like 32, that's gonna be a space. Yep. If you put something like 67 over here, it's gonna be A B space C. So in short, all these numbers are actually conver getting converted to characters as per the ASCII table, and that's what this constructor does, which that takes the byte array inside. Again, you can specify where to start and where to end by saying start at zero and take next two characters. Then it's going to print only A, B, that is start at zero and take these two, right? If you say start at two and take two, it's going to be zero, one, two over here, and it's going to take these two characters. That's going to be space and C. It's a pretty simple constructor. So I hope you guys have understood the different constructors. There are some other constructors as well with care set and stuff, but you don't need them much. We don't use them much. So this should be pretty this should do the trick pretty much. So if you guys like what you saw, please subscribe to my channel, leave your thoughts, let me know what you think about this. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys later. Have a nice day.